But I think in a broader sense, the philosophy that, you know, many of us embrace, the philosophy of objectivism, Ayn Rand's ideas, can be presented as a philosophy really... What is the essential thing about love? I mean, how can one love? I mean, uh, I think, I think uh, Ayn Rand uh, uh, somewhere says, um, before you can say, I love you, one has to be able to say, I. So you start with the I. You start by having, by taking you seriously, by taking your life seriously, by loving yourself, by pursuing your values. You start with you. And objectivism gives you the principles by which to live by, to live successfully, to live happily, to gain self-esteem, to gain self-respect, to gain appreciation for who you are. Objectivism encourages you, the virtue of pride, to seek to be the best that you can be to strive towards and try to achieve moral perfection, which means to take your life seriously with everything that that implies, to fight for your values, to strive for your values, for whom? For you, so that you can be the best that you can be, so that you can live the best life that you can live. It means taking your mind seriously. And it requires, psychologically, it really does require that you love life. I think that is, that is the precondition for loving anything else, is loving being alive, loving life, loving the fact that you open your eyes and you see all this and you can understand it and you can shape it and you can have an impact that you are in control. Imagine if you believed there was no free will. How could love be possible? I am nothing but just random atoms. You know, I, I make no choices. The world is not mine. That would be pretty dark. That would be pretty bleak. That would be pretty depressing. So you are in control. The recognition of that. And this world is amazing. And your, your ability to live in this world is amazing. And the fact that you exist is amazing. And that should inspire you. Every day should inspire you. So we start with the love of being alive, the love of the world that makes it, that, that in which we live. With all the flaws that exist out there, it's still good to be alive. And of course you can, you have control over the kind of life you want to live, the kind of world you want to create. So the fact that you love life, the fact that you love being in this world is the real motivation for going out there and trying to shape it and try to make it better and trying to make it the best that it can be for you. And that's, of course, everything about objectivism encourages you to do that, to produce, to reshape reality. In a sense, in your image, to reshape reality for your own life, for your own enjoyment, for your own values, for your own financial well-being. And knowing that you can do that, again, is part of, part of what it is to, to, to love the world. Imagine if you were, <laughs> imagine if we were born into a world where you had no ability to shape the world around you. You had no ability to reshape it 
to fit into your values. Robert says, let's see, Robert Nasir says, you are speaking my language. You are the star of your life. Yes. The director. Yes. The screenwriter. Yes. And the producer of this show. And don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Now, the beauty of it is that everybody else is the same in their life. At least everybody else who's healthy is the same as their life. And that your interaction with them is between producers, between directors, between screenwriters. So just as you would not want anybody else to try to impose their life on you, their values on you, their control over you, you should never want to do that to somebody else. Another way in which to live a healthy, productive marriage is to recognize that. That we're all independent. We're all producers, directors, screenwriters, and actors. We're all stars. And we all need to be granted the independence and treated as individuals and stars. Andrew asks, what's the connection between productivity and love? Well, as I said, the, 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 you know, I think love starts with self. And I don't think you can really love yourself and love your life unless you are productive. Because productivity is essential for your self-esteem. It's essential for you to feel, to know that you can take care of yourself in this world, that you are competent, that you belong, that you can sustain your life in this world. So productivity is essential for self-esteem, which I think is essential for loving oneself, which I think then is essential for loving others. That is, if you cannot control your own environment, if you cannot take care of yourself, if you cannot earn a living, if you cannot produce, then you, what emotion would that evoke in you? Imagine, place yourself in that kind of situation. You don't know where the money's going to come from tomorrow, or you're living off of some trust fund, but you can't produce anything. You can't create anything. What that produces is fear, maybe resentment, suddenly lack of self-esteem and that eviscerates any ability to respect yourself and therefore and it eviscerates any ability to love someone else you can potentially like people you can you can be dependent on people you can um you can lust after others but real love real love the requires real romantic love requires that you be you have an eye you have a self and that self requires that you produce that you create at whatever level you can in, in whatever whatever you know we all have different roles in terms of production so i think productivity and being productive and generally, I think being virtuous, being rational, being productive, being independent, being honest, are kind of prerequisites for being good <laughs> at love, at, at, at experiencing it fully, being able to sustain it, being able to maintain it, being able to maintain a relationship. People with low self-esteem have hard times maintaining relationships. They're constantly doubting themselves, never mind doubting others. So, uh, objectivism is about loving life. You know, one of the main features of objectivism, one of the main uh, outcomes of objectivism is a real love of life, a real love of the engagement with reality. And, and again, the link to productivity is one of the things that I think are so essential to be successfully productive is to love what you do. Again, to love is to value. To love is to value strongly. To love is to, is to place whatever it is you love as, the, as, a, as a really, at the top of the value hierarchy. And, and we know that productivity as a virtue, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a virtue purpose, is a cardinal value. 
But think about people who have, who, who have a, a career, but they hate it. They don't enjoy it. They don't like it. Compare that to somebody who loves their career, who loves being productive, who loves going to work every day, who loves what they do in every moment of what they do. That, I mean, think about how much that elevates your life. Think about how much more that enhances your ability to love the world and love your life and love everything that you do. Because we spend so much time at work. We spend so much effort at work. We spend so much of our mental effort at work. One of the real crucial reasons you should find a career that you love, you should not settle with regard to career. It's just the amount of time, energy, effort you spend there. You want to make every moment count. You want to make every, every ounce of calorie, every, every, <laughs> not ounce of calories, every calorie you exert in an effort, you want it to count, you want it to matter. Again, I, I say this often, but you can't, there's no repeat, there's no rewind, there's no redo, there's no, I'll get those hours back. This is it. This is it. So make every moment of it count. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>